Hey Pitmasters, what is up? Today we're going to do another beef battle. Tri-tip versus picanha. And as always, the first thing that we're going to do is fire up our barbecue. Of course, we need a bit of big block to start up the barbecue. I already have some leftover charcoal in here, but we're just going to add to that. Now for this recipe, we're going to be roasting, so I want a higher temperature. I'm looking towards somewhere between 160 and 180 degrees Celsius. Use a couple of these fire starters to light it up. While the barbecue is starting up, we're going to take a look at the picanha and tri-tip. So I've got these beautiful cuts of beef. They're both grain fed. Basically the same, of course there's not going to be the same cow. And now we're going to take these out of the package and take a closer look at them. This is our picanha. Look at that. Fantastic cut of beef. Big fat cap on top here. And then we also get a little bit of silver skin which we're going to take off. Because on the, on the bottom we really want to expose that, that meat so we can get some flavor on there. And this is our tri-tip. They both have a lot of fat on them and they both are really great to eat. Picanha used to be my favorite cut of beef and now I'm leaning more towards the tri-tip actually. And the funny thing is that the picanha has become much more expensive. It used to be very cheap and now over time it's getting more and more expensive. The price of the picanha is around 55 euros here in the Netherlands. Whereas a tri-tip is more around 33 euros for the same amount of weight. So let's clean these up, put a little bit of black pepper and salt on them and start grilling. So what I want to do is take off this excess fat and silver skin on the bottom where it doesn't need to be. You definitely always want to do this work because you bought a cut of beef and you want to make it look as good as you can. It will definitely enhance the experience of eating it. Look at this, a big part of silver skin with a lot of fat on it. You definitely want to trim that off. So go underneath with your knife and when you're all the way underneath, lift it up and start working your way up. Taking off as little meat as possible and at the same time taking off all that fat. Look at that. Now take a look at the top. I'm looking here at this part here which is probably going to burn a bit. So we're taking off the sides here. We'll just score it just to have it render down even more even. Let's get the picanha out. Also a beautiful cut of beef. Also intermuscular fat right there. Look at this. We want to get rid of that. That's a bit of hard fat that's not supposed to be there. Our charcoal is up to temperature. Let's put the grill grate on. Now look at this grill grate. It's all greased up and still dirty from the last cook. We want it to be that way. So what we're going to have right now is that we get that burning of the residues that's left from the last cook. And that's quite okay because this is a cast iron grill grate. We're going to burn that off and when it's completely hot we're going to take a brush, clean it off and then we're ready to go. Let's close the lid. Let the barbecue come up to temperature. This is now two cuts that are beautiful. This is the way they are supposed to look, a picanha and a tri-tip. So it's definitely worth putting in the effort, cleaning them up with your knife and don't be afraid to go in and clean up all that silver skin and fat that you don't want. Of course you want to keep the fat cap on both of them on top a little bit and you can definitely see on the picanha there's a lot of more, a lot more fat on there. Because we had to cut off so much fat, I just want to measure what the steaks weigh now. They were both around the 1600 gram. I just want to see what's left of that. They both were around 1600 grams and the tri-tip is now around 1300 grams. So we lost 300 grams on the tri-tip. And the picanha is now 1160 grams, which was around 1600 grams. So we're losing over around 450 grams. That's actually quite a lot. But hey, it's about the end result. Let's put some salt on these beautiful cuts and get them on the grill. We definitely want to put a lot of salt on that fat just to help it render. Put the pepper on afterwards because the pepper will burn and become bitter. 
There we go. Gorgeous. Now let's get these on the grill. As you can see, the residues of the last cook are burned. And we just can scrape them off like this. Now let's put in these beautiful steaks. Close the lid and let them slowly roast over an indirect heat at around 160 to 180 degrees Celsius. So while our picanha and tri-tip are roasting, we are going to work on a salsa verde. And I want to have a really strong sauce that stands up against the beef flavor. But we're also going to grill some lettuce. You just want to make sure you don't have an excuse not to eat healthy food. I'm going to start with a little bit of cilantro. We're just going to chop that up. We're also going to take some parsley. We want to have a bit more parsley than cilantro. So we'll take double that amount. Now a few leaves of mint. We definitely don't want too much mint. We want to add a shallot. We're going to chop the shallot really fine. And then a bit of garlic. Now we want to have plenty of garlic. I got smoked garlic here. And then you're going to use four cloves of garlic. Now let's put all of this together. In a bowl. We also want to add four teaspoons of capers. We're taking four of these anchovies fillets. And we're slicing these fine as well. Now you can turn this into puree if you want to with the tip of your knife. That will help to mix it up in our salsa verde. And now we'll add some good quality olive oil. And you want to get that peppery kind. Also want to add black pepper. Now we'll mix that up. And before we're going to add salt, we just want to give it a try. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. Powerful flavors. The reason that we want to taste it before we add salt is because there's a lot of salt in our anchovies and in our capers. What well, definitely needs a little bit more. So I'd say that's a teaspoon of salt. Give it a quick try. Wow. Great flavors. Now, the best thing to do is do this like two to three hours before you start grilling your steak so really the flavors get an opportunity to blend. We'll set this aside. Let's check on our steaks. Look at that. Now you can see that they're about done because they are tensioning up and the fat is starting to pop out. So we just want to check on temperature. Yeah, we're getting close to the 50 range. So we're at 48 degrees Celsius right now. That's where I want to get them over to direct heat and just get them to crispen up. So we'll move them over to direct heat. And the charcoal has really slowed down in heat. So we're just getting a slight heat. We just want to sear it, maybe rotate them a little bit, just to make sure that you get the proper Maillard effect. Now flip them over, fat side down, and this is where you really want to keep checking them. Just to make sure you don't get these flare-ups that burn the meat, that put that horrible fat, burnt fat flavor on your steak. You can hear the salt pop and that's the fat that's rendering down. The salt is dropping into the fire and that's why we put a lot of salt on the fat. It helps to dry out but it eventually falls down into the fire. So it won't be as salty as you th might think it would be. Look at that. Look at that, we're getting that fat that's rendering down. Look at the color we're getting. Nice golden brown. Crispy and crunchy, absolutely beautiful. Now we're taking off the tri-tip because she looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at that color, look at that crunch that we got on the fat, perfect. Wow. And Africania has done as well, look at this. Nice crunchy, nice caramelization, absolutely gorgeous. Now we got to let these rest for at least 10 minutes. The fluids just need to redistribute and it's got to relax. So we're leaving them on the plank. We're putting on a little bit of tin foil just to keep the heat in. And that's it. We don't want to pack them in too tight in the tin foil. We just want to have it on loose so the juices can still evaporate a little bit. It still keeps it crunched, but at the same time, it won't lose too much heat. Now it's time to give it a check. Whoa, they look really, really good. Amazing. Now. There's one thing left to do, and you thought it was going to be slicing into the steak, right? Well, that's not true. First, we're going to slice into our jam lettuce, because while we are waiting 
for us to slice up our steak and do a taste test. We're just going to cut these lettuces. Look at that. Open them up, put on a little bit of that salsa verde and make sure it gets into that lettuce. And this is a really great barbecue side dish, so you really have to give it a try. Now let's go to the grill and put these on. We only need around 10 to 20 seconds or so. Look at that. Nice bit of caramelization on the outside of the lettuce. Not too much. We definitely don't want too much. That's just going to give us a little bit of extra flavor. Now we've got the healthy part out of the way. Let's start slicing into these steaks. And you can see if you slice with it, you're going to get a tough cut of meat to eat. But we're going to slice against it. Let's do a quick taste test. Mm. That is so amazing. Now, of course, what this video comes down to is, would you pick tri-tip over picanha or the other way around? So we're just going to taste both of them. Look at this, the tri-tip. You see how tender that is? I'm lifting it up, it already is almost falling apart. Gorgeous. Real nice beefy flavor. This is just fantastic. I love tri-tip. It's absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Let's take a look at the picanha. It's a little tougher than a tri-tip. Let's bite a piece of that off. Mm. Absolutely fantastic as well. You know what? The picanha is actually a little bit more tender. The flavor is actually the same. If I'm gonna give my verdict, I gotta say I'm paying a little bit too much for my picanha if you compare it to the tri-tip. If I'm paying 55 euros for my picanha, and I can get a tri-tip for 33, which has the same flavor profile, I'm definitely gonna pick the tri-tip. So we have a big winner here, the tri-tip one for me. It's my favorite cut right now, absolutely gorgeous. Of course, we need to try it with a little salsa verde, because you know, that salsa verde is just looking at me, screaming, eat me. So there we go. Mm. That is so good. It's really strong in flavor, but it's freshening at the same time. Now, of course, we got to try that lettuce as well. Let me get a piece of that off. There we go. Mm. The lettuce is a great side dish. It's crunchy, it's fresh with the salsa verde. It's fantastic. All in all, this was a great test. I love doing it. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button. Leave us a comment down below. And maybe you have a great idea for the next beef battle. Until next time, eat smakelijk and keep on grilling. <laughs>